everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the high tide shawl. This is a lovely wrap. You can wear a lot of different seasons of the year. It can be cozy um, or it can just be like a wrap in like a warmer situation with like air conditioning or something like that. Uh, we're going to be using some really basic stitches to create this nice stitch sequence. Some single crochets, double crochets, and some chains are all you'll need to know. Um, if you don't know any of those stitches, we are going to go through each one of them together, and that will make a beautiful wrap that you can wear year-round. The finished shawl measures about 18 inches wide and 75 inches long. So it's a nice, wide, long, just a really generous size shawl, um, which is perfect to wrap around you. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle. We're going to be using a six millimeter J crochet hook. This is my furl streamline. This was a, um, an ebony and maple wood hook. And um, I'll put the link down below in a coupon code if you'd like to get one for yourself. For our yarn, we're going to be using 955 yards of worsted weight yarn. Now, I have this um, pretty teal yarn. This was a special edition Black Friday yarn from Hobie. Um, and I can put the link down below. You can see some of the other worsted weight yarns that they have. Um, they have lots of stuff. This is a four medium on the yarn weight scale. And the recommended hook size is actually an I crochet hook, but I'm going to go up a hook size to the J just to give us a nice drape for our shawl. But I'm using one, two, three, four, five balls of this yarn. Each ball of this is 191 yards, and it comes in dye lots, just so you know. And I'm using this like sort of like a muted teal color. So let's get started. Okay, so I have my yarn and my hook and we're ready to go. Before we make our starting chain, um, I just wanted to let you know that if you want to change the width, like if you wanted to make a blanket or a scarf or a little narrower or wider of a shawl, our starting chain is 53, but it's a multiple of three plus two. If you're not familiar with multiples, just know when you're doing your starting chain, it's three plus three plus three plus three plus three and so forth, and then add two more chains onto that, okay? So do your three plus threes as long as you'd like them to go um, to get the width, and then you can add two more chains onto that, and that's how you can change it up. So we're gonna do a starting chain of 53, okay? So let me zoom back in. So to begin, we're gonna put a slip knot on our hook. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. Again, our starting chain is 53, to make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two, and fifty-three. So here is our starting chain. And when you do your starting chain, just double check that you're happy with the width. And again, you can change it using the multiple that I talked about a minute ago. So for row one, what we're gonna do is work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. We're gonna go one, two, and work a single crochet in there. Insert the hook into that second chain from the hook, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through both loops. Then what we're gonna do is chain three, one, two, three, and then we're gonna skip two chains, one, two, and work a single crochet into the next chain. Just like that, okay? So I'm gonna get a little bit more yarn here. And then we're just gonna sort of repeat this across. So chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, and the chain after that, work a single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three. 
skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet, and we're just doing this all the way across. Chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, Skip two chains in the chain after that, work a single crochet. I'm going to just grab a little bit more yarn here. Chain three. One, two, three. Skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that. Chain three. One, two, three. Skip two chains single crochet in the chain after that, chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, work a single crochet in the chain after that, and we are at the end of our row, see we have three chains left, so what we're going to do to finish off the row is the same thing we've been doing, chain three, one, two, three, skip two chains, and in that very last chain, work a single crochet. So row one is complete. Now row one's the only row where we're gonna be counting and skipping and things like that. Now let me just zoom out a little bit. You can see row one is a series of loops, if you will. So let me just, uh, if you did the same starting chain as me, I just wanted to show you. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 loops across, just so you know to keep you on track. All right, let's move on to row two next. Let me grab my hook. So for row two, what we're gonna do is, let me just grab some yarn so we can get through this row too. So for row two, what we need to do is chain three, and let me zoom back in so you can see. Chain three, one, two, three, and we're gonna turn our work. Now this chain three we did counts as a double crochet. We're going to work in that, that single crochet from the previous row that we ended on. We're gonna work a double crochet into that single crochet, okay? So work a double crochet, actually let me back up. To make a double crochet, if you're not familiar, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert it into that stitch, that single crochet from the previous row, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Then what we're gonna do is work a single crochet into this chain three space. The chain three space is just this big loop here, okay, that we did by making the chain three. So we'll go right in there and work a single crochet into that chain three space. And then what we're gonna do is work three double crochets in that single crochet. So in between these chain three spaces, remember we did a single crochet. So into that single crochet, we're gonna work three double crochets. And those are gonna make some lovely little open fans. One, two, and three, just like that. Okay? Now hop over to that next chain three space, work a single crochet in that. Go to that single crochet in between those chain three spaces and work three double crochet. One, two, and three. All right, let me get a little bit more yarn because my yarn ball is kind of creeping over here. All right, work a single crochet into that chain three space. And then you can kind of see we're establishing a pattern here. We already have some cute little fans. 
And then we're going to, in that single crochet that you come across next, work three double crochets right in there. So one, two, and three. Work a single crochet in the next space there, that chain three space, and three double crochet into that single crochet. One double crochet, two double crochet, and three double crochet. Hop over to that chain three space and work a single crochet, and then hop over to that single crochet and work three double crochet. One, two, and three. It's starting to look really pretty. We're getting some lovely uh, fans going here. We get a little bit more yarn. Okay, work a single crochet in that chain three space, then three double crochet into that single crochet. One, two, and three. Work a single crochet in that chain three space. Whoops, I had a, wrapped my yarn, I wasn't supposed to. Work a single crochet in that chain three space, then three double crochet into that single crochet. One, two, and three. Work a single crochet into that chain three space. Work three double crochet into that single crochet. One, two double crochet. Two double crochet. And three double crochet. Work a single crochet in that chain three space. And three double crochet into that single crochet. One, two, and three. Work a single crochet into that chain three space. And three double crochet into that single crochet. One, two, and three. Work a single crochet into that chain three space, and then three double crochet into that single crochet. One, two, and three. Single crochet in the chain three space. Three double crochet into the single crochet. One, two, three, single crochet into the chain three space, and three double crochet into that single crochet. One, two, and three. Single crochet in that chain three space, and three double crochet into that single crochet, one, two, three, single crochet in that chain three space, and three double crochet into that single crochet, one, two, and three. Single crochet into that chain three space. We are almost at the end. And three double crochet into that single crochet. So to finish off the row, see we have one more loop here. We're gonna work a single crochet right into that chain three space. And then at the end, you wanna locate that single crochet from the previous row. It's right there at the end. You're gonna work two double crochets into that single crochet right there hanging out at the end of the row here. So one double crochet and two double crochet. All right, so row two is complete. We have a lovely start to our shawl. We have some beautiful fans and they're gonna be nice and open looking. 
for row three, we're going to chain one and turn. Then we're going to work a single crochet into that very first double crochet from the previous row. So right in there, work a single crochet. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then we're going to work a single crochet in the centermost stitch from the next fan. So this fan that we come to, this next one, remember there were three double crochets. You're going to go in the very center stitch of the fan and work a single crochet. Okay, and then you're just going to do this all the way across. So let's do a few together. Chain three, one, two, three. Hop to the next fan, work a single crochet in that centermost stitch. Just like that. Chain three, one, two, three. You just get a little bit more yarn. And work a single crochet in the centermost fan. Chain three, one, two, three. Work a single crochet in that centermost fan. Chain three. One, two, three. Work a single crochet in that centermost fan. Chain three. One, two, three. Single crochet in that centermost fan. Stitch. Chain three. One, two, three. Single crochet in that centermost fan. Chain three. One, two, three. Single crochet in that centermost fan. Chain three. One, two, three. We get it untwisted here. I'm all twisted up. Uh, single crochet in that centermost fan. Chain three. One, two, three. Single crochet in that centermost fan. Chain three. One, two, three. Single crochet in the centermost fan. Chain three. One, two, three. Single crochet in the center fan here. Chain three. One, two, three. Single crochet in that centermost fan. We are zipping right along on this row. This is a pretty fast moving row here. Get some more yarn. Chain three. One, two, three. Single crochet in that centermost fan. Chain three. One, two, three. Single crochet in that centermost fan. Chain three. One, two, three. Single crochet in that centermost fan. And now we're at the end. We've run out of full size fans. This is sort of like a half fan here. To finish up the row, what you're gonna do is you're gonna work a single crochet in the turning chain space at the end of the row. So when we did our turning chain, it made this little space. You can sort of see it. It's like a backwards letter D. Go into that space and work a single crochet to finish off the row. Okay, so we're at our last fan. So what we're gonna do to finish the row is chain three. One, two, three. And then we're gonna work in that turning chain space. You can kind of see it. It looks like a big loop with an opening here. Work a single crochet into that turning chain space. And row three is complete. So to finish your shawl, we're gonna be repeating. Now let me flip it over because this is actually like the front of the shawl. So to finish our shawl, what we're gonna do is just repeat. You can see our, our fans. We have like this little, it almost looks like a little trellis. Um, so to finish our shawl, we're just gonna be repeating rows two and three, two and three, over and over and over again until your shawl is as long as you would like it to be. I'm gonna keep going with mine, and when we rejoin, we'll have more rows worked up. We're gonna tackle some finish work and look at our finished piece when we return. So keep going with rows two and three, two and three, and we'll rejoin in just a minute. All right, I'm just working that very last stitch of the row. Now I ended on a scallop row because I love the way the edge looks. But if you want, um, I know a lot of times I get questions about this, about the bottom edge matching the top edge. So you, if you want a flat edge on both ends, 
Um, you can work one more row and it'll be flat across. But I really love the way this looks and I kind of like to wrap it so that the scallop shows. So it's totally up to you. You can end on either row depending on what look that you're after. Um, I don't have quite enough yarn to finish, so I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, the next thing you want to do is grab your scissors, cut the yarn, and we're going to fasten off. Wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it through the loop. And then all you'll need to do is just grab your tapestry needle and weave in any ends that you have. So let's weave this one in together just to get a feel for it. And I'm going to go in the back. So our, our shawl has a front and a back now. This was the, uh, when you made the scallops, the side that faced you. And then you have like a back. See how it looks a little bit more, almost like bubblier. Um, but then you have your front. So flip it over to the back and go in with your tapestry needle. And I'm just going to go through some of these stitches here. Stay on those back loops, though, so it doesn't come out to the front. And we're going to go in one direction with our tapestry needle. And then we're going to go back in the other direction here. Just like that. And then I like to go back in the other direction like that so that um, my tail will get locked into place. And then I'm just going to snip. Okay, so our shawl is complete. You'll want to go through and see if there's any other ends that you'll want to take care of, but our shawl looks beautiful. I have some here I got to deal with. So that is how you crochet the high tide shawl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.